Give a little love yourself. Cure your greed. Purify your wealth. Look around at where you live. Look at all the good you have to give. Give a little love yourself. There's a hand somewhere to hold, a mouth to feed. There's so much that we can do for so many who are in need. Give our time, give our wealth, give our love, give ourselves. No one lost sees each and every hidden deed. Give a little love yourself. Cure your greed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to the Fiqh of Zakah, the third pillar of Islam, a very important topic that affects all of society, all of the Muslim society. To help me go through this topic and to expound, we have our Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad As-Salamu Alaikum Sheikh. Welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Jamil. Sheikh, previous episodes we've looked at zakah in its definitions, how to imply it. We went through it in currency, we went to gold and silver, and we looked into the plants, the crops, and you explained to us what crops we were going to use in this zakah this arena of zakah. One thing you spoke about before were certain types of crops. So you said to us, for example, wheat, barley, raisins and dates. Now what if we have different types of crops and we put them together? Can they then still be calculated zakah upon? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Al-Aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Wa la udwana illa ala al-zalimeen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidi al-awwaleen wa al-akhireen. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. When we stated the nisab, which is khamsatu awsuq, and we said approximately it is equivalent to 720 kilogram of grains or fruits, whatever we specified, uh, this is a nisab for each item. Mm-hmm. So if somebody possessed four and a half awsuq of any of those categories, and another three or four and a half of another category. We do not say we combine them together in order to complement each other and have the nisab mm. or more than the nisab. No. The nisab for each category is independent. So if it doesn't reach it, then this part or this category is not zakatable. So like the gold and silver, like you told us before, there's no combination exactly. in this. Is there any time that there can be a combination for these products at all? Is there any... Time at all that there's a if it is of the same category but maybe different varieties so for instance raisin we have a higher quality mm-hmm. and a lower quality in the same field or he has more than one field and uh, the harvest is a good quality and a lower quality so obviously will be merged together and added to each other and whatever uh, the sum up, whether it is a nisab or more than the, the nisab mm. so because we do not uh, say because this is a different quality it should be treated as a different category and by the way perhaps that um, would lead us to uh, uh, also speak about since we're speaking about quality that whenever the farmer or the person who is a zakah payer uh, owes a zakah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us mm-hmm. in the Quran with the following fact that we should not look for the worst quality and take it out and give it to the poor. Unfortunately, people do that. Uh, for instance, when we, when we buy dates in certain areas, people may put the good quality on top, just the first uh, patch. Then when you finish it up, you will see the, the, the small ones, the defective ones beneath it. This is haram. This is cheating. And... Whenever we're supposed to give the old zakah, we're supposed to choose what's good. What's the best of the crop, would you say? Not would necessarily, you say because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal, وَإِيَّاكَ وَكَرَائِمُ أَمْوَالِهِمْ So do not take the best mm-hmm. to hurt the rich, nor do we take the worst to hurt the poor. Rather the average. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers who are the zakah payers, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in verse number 276, as follows, he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْفِقُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ Spend in a charity, the mandatory charity, from the lawful earning, what you have earned. 
ومما أخرجنا لكم من الأرض that is pertaining the produce of earth ولا تيمم الخبيث منه تنفقون and don't you aim at the worst of the produce in order to give it to the poor ولستم بآخذيه إلا أن تغمضوا فيه واعلموا أن الله غني حميد which means put yourself in the position of the poor the recipient you yourself, you are not going to take this because you know it's a very bad quality unless if you have to close your eyes mm-hmm. in order to tolerate it, act like, you know, pretend that you did not see it because you're extremely hungry mm-hmm. or you just have to take it. No. Put yourself in the position of the recipient. What would you like? You don't have to give the best, but at least من طيبات ما كسبته and don't aim at the worst of it. Now we've gone through in previous episodes wealth. We looked at the different types of wealth. And now we've gone through, for example, the currencies and gold and silver. We've gone through now plants. Um, and of course, that of course is food stuff. There's one part of this whole cycle that we haven't touched upon. And we could say it's one of the most important because many people are graded nowadays on this type of, shall we say, wealth, which is lively livestock or so you say cattle. How does that fare in terms of zakah, Shaykh? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us that there is zakah due on cattle, but not on, on livestock or on animals, but particular things such as camels, uh, cattle or cows and buffaloes, and sheep. So these are the only three categories. So donkeys and horses and all of that, unless if they're used in trade. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Trade is different, as we discussed before. Uh, but the three categories or kinds of animals or livestock which is zakatable, al-ibil, camels. Al-baqar, cows. Al-ghanam, the lamb or uh, the sheep. But before we speak about the nisab and the hawl, because it's also necessary in order to determine whether this is zakatable or not, we have to reflect on some of the beautiful verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal in the Quran reminding us with this blessing of making animals and cattle subservient to us some of which we ride on their back means of transportation some of which are used for tilting and uh, agriculture some of which are used for milk subhanallah eating their flesh <laughs> whatever we wear of yeah. fur of genuine leather I mean, endless benefits. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 66 of Surah An-Nahl. An-Nahl means the honeybees. Mm. And by the way, Surah An-Nahl talks a lot about cattle, Al-An'am. To the extent some scholars say it should have been called Surah Al-An'am. Mm-hmm. While there is a whole chapter, it's a very lengthy one. It's called Al-An'am or the cattle. The verse says, وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنْعَامِ لَعِبَرَةً نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ مِنْ بَيْنِ فَرْثٍ وَدَمٍ لَبَنًا خَالِصًا سَائِغًا لِلشَّارِبِينَ Here is an example, a reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us with one of the great blessings, cattle. You have an admonition in them. How? Look at the milk that you drink and you enjoy. Say, it has so much calcium and you have to drink milk in order to grow uh, good bones, powerful structure, etc. This milk is coming as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from between the following. Min bayni farthin wadam. Between the, 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 the feces, the excretion, and the urine, of the waste of the animal and the blood. So neither one of them is, 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 this is disgusting. So milk is coming from between these two items. And there we have a purified drink. سَائِغًا خَالِصًا purified سَائِغًا فَلَتَبُوا لِلشَّارِبِينَ for those who drink it and they enjoy it. في سورة يسين الله سبحانه وتعالى says أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِمَّا عَمِلَتْ أَيْدِينَا أَنْعَامًا فَهُمْ لَهَا مَالِكُونَ Have they not seen that we have uh, created for, for them of what our hand have made cattle so that they possess and they control? How? وَذَلَّلْنَاهَا لَهُمْ فَمِنْهَا رَكُوبُهُمْ وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ And we made the, those cattle subservient to them. So some of which they ride on their back and some of which they, they eat their flesh. 
وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعُ وَمَشَارِبُ And there are multiple benefits and drink. أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ Won't they be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are some of the ni'am. There are many, many verses in, in this regard. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders wealthy people who have plenty of livestock and investing in them, to give out of that a small percentage of the same kind, animals, to the poor, because the poor are seeing your herd and your cattle going back and forth, going grazing, coming back to the stable. So they look at them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, satisfy the need of the poor by some of what we have given you. Uh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated that the zakat due in livestock is in camel, camels, cows, and uh, sheep. And there is a general consensus amongst the scholars of the ummah. These are the three categories which are zakatable, uh, providing they reach the nisab. For each kind, there is a specific nisab. It is different than gold and silver and currencies. Different than the plants and uh, the fruits. And in case of livestock, al-hawl is required as well, which is possessing the livestock, the nisab, for one complete lunar year. وَأَن تَكُونَ سَائِمَةً This is another extra condition, which mm. is that freely grazing. They have free pasture. So they don't, they're not the ones which are, how do you say, brought up on and cultivated. These are ones that are going on the free land. Basically, you have your cattle or your camels, and you send them in, in, the, in the open, they eat from the grass. It's called freely grazing. Hmm. They eat from the green that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. So in this condition, such livestock meeting those conditions, attaining the nisab one complete year, and sa'ima freely grazing is zakatable. Remains for us to address the rate of zakat for each category. Jazakal khair. It's a good point for us to take a, a short break now. Please remember these topics that we're discussing are those which are beneficial for all of us. Please take a pen, take a pad, take notes. Very interesting, very informative topics. Please join me in a couple of minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Give a little love yourself. Cure your greed. Purify your wealth. Oh. Oh. The philosophy of Islamic law. A program for restoring belief and trust within Muslims' mind and heart and for re-establishing a true concept about Islamic rules for others. That we can do for so many who are in need. Give our time, give our wealth, give our love, give ourselves. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the Fiqh of Zakah. 